Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're going to be working on a South Bend reel today. This is the, the Cast Orono number no. 5. This is a later edition. It's uh, South Bend made in Japan, and uh, well, that tells you approximately when it was made, the 1970s, late 60s, 70s. Um, one of the things that a lot of folks do not realize is that South Bend uh, didn't make reels. They branded reels, but uh, they contracted with others uh, to do that for them. And the majority of the early South Bend reels that you find were actually made by Shakespeare. And then the later ones were trade reels manufactured in Japan. Uh, I don't know the, uh, the company that made them, but they probably made the Shakespeare reels after production was moved over there. For Shakespeare as well. Well, this is this is running, but it's tight and it's got a noise to it. So we're going to show you how the reel was made by taking it apart. We'll clean it up, we'll service it, and we'll keep this one running for a long time to come. So if you enjoy these types of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button, as that will tell you when I am posting the video. And, uh, well, you'll get a chance to see if this is one that you want to watch. I work on vintage and antique reels. I work on modern-day current line reels. And uh, salt water, fresh water, bait casting, everything in between. And uh, if you like that kind of thing, well, then this channel will probably be a good one to teach you how to do it yourself. Or at least, at least let you understand the art of fishing reels and fishing reel repair. But we started by removing the handle. You saw that there was a nut cap that holds the handle on, and I used the little nut driver for that. And uh, we're, we're lucky on this. A lot of the older reels, these buttons uh, seize up and uh, swell, and then you can't turn them. Well, in this case, these are plastic on steel, as opposed to uh, some of the other pieces that were molded back in the day, if you will. And uh, we got uh, to take that off rather easily. One of the things I like to do as I'm servicing fishing reels is to encourage you to take pictures. A lot of the times you're not going to be able to find a diagram, particularly if it's a trade reel. And if you don't find that diagram and you start getting involved with taking the reel apart and get lost along the way, well, you're going to have a project that's in pieces and parts. So take the pictures at critical junctures, and that way you'll have orientations and you'll know how the reel was before you started pulling pieces on it, and that's generally a good guide to get you back. All right, I took the two screws out. That should be the only thing holding the side plate in here. It is. Uh, you can see the main gear behind there, and we have a plastic piece. This one just generally swells. A lot of times you can find these older reels have um, dried out, cracked pieces, and there's really nothing you can do with that. So, here's a good reason why you take a picture. This side of it is flat. This side of it has an indent. And you want to know which side goes, well, in which orientation. So, that's a good place to take that picture. The answer is that flat side faces the gear side plate. Well, I'm just going to use a little bit of penetrating oil and a cotton swab to see if I can't clean up the inner grease on this one. Just like that and a paper towel to wipe it off. Sometimes you can get lucky here and clean it up a little bit. We're going to take a cotton, uh, a kitchen scrubby, a little bit of rod and reel cleaner. And we're going to see if that might polish up some of this. Be careful, this is a fragile piece. As I mentioned, if it breaks, well, you pretty much have a broken piece. You're not going to find replacement parts for it. This reel, as I mentioned, is probably late 60s, early 70s. And, uh, well, just given the age of that, it's going to tell you that it's going to be hard to find. One of the things that's interesting, I always recommend ORCA, the Old Real Collectors Association. They publish an awful lot of books. Here's a book here on uh, the fishing reels of South Bend. Uh, these are articles that were in ORCA's Real News magazine. Uh, the author is Jim Madden. And um, I just bought it. It's, you can see it's kind of brand new. I haven't had a chance to look at it. But a lot of folks ask, where do I learn about things like that? Well, Orca is one place that uh, has an awful lot of information out there. As part of your membership, uh, you have access to all of the old real news um, issues. And you could probably, without buying that book, you could actually go back and, 
and go through their library and find every last one of the ones that was um, published. Or in this case, it's just convenient to have it on hand and uh, I'll just kind of read it at your leisure if you're an old, got to turn the pages kind of a guy or a gal. All right, I'm just cleaning the side plate here. You saw I removed the main gear. The main gear has a little pin on it. You can remove that too if you like. Clean that up. And I think what we're going to find with this reel is mechanically it's working fine. Uh, it just has old dried grease on it. It doesn't have any fresh grease. It's probably been sitting for some time. If I recall, this reel came in as part of a, um, a group of reels that I purchased. And, uh, well, I just haven't done anything, but I kind of getting on me that I should so I had a moment to break there and uh, well here you go put a little bit of grease onto that shaft I'm going to insert that shaft into the gear now so make sure that's flush then check the teeth on this if uh, if need be go get a hard brush this is kind of devoid of grease but get for illustration get a hard brush pull through those teeth making sure that you can see the valleys in there and that they're nice and clear. Both of these gears, the gear that drives the spool and the gear that drives the level wind, well, they're both in need of some grease, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And once you grease that, we can put that off to the side. What I like to do is put my pieces and parts into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container that way, when it comes time to reinstall, well, I kind of know where those parts go. Don't have to go searching for them. This is a, a plated steel spool, and what we're seeing here is rust. And, well, you can't do much on that other than replate, and certainly that's an effort by itself. I'm not a replater, but I will try to use some steel wall and some chrome polish and see what kind of rust I can knock off of there. It's not going to be perfect, but rust will spread. So try and do what you can. How did the rust get there? Well, it's likely that the folks didn't follow the instructions of the day on the use and care of these reels. And believe it or not, these older reels, now by 70 I think it's changed a little bit with monofilament, but the older reels that used the braid, they had instructed you after each fishing expedition or day on the water or whatever we want to use for the term to remove the line and let the line dry separately and not on the spool because they knew eventually over time this would be the issue there. Okay, we have a line guide mechanism here. Let's see if I can get this out by itself. Probably not. So I'm going to remove the pawl and this is the one part of these reels that if they break, if you're considering purchasing one, please test it out. If you find that the pole or the level line guide, the line guide does not work, don't buy the reel. Because you're not going to, unless you have a spare pole, because you're not going to find that spare pole. I just pulled the pole out. Now I can remove the line guide. Set these up in order, make sure you notice which side is which. And I did that because I want to clean underneath here. I'm going to use a penetrating oil. In this case, it's WD-40. I don't have a preference for penetrating oils. I don't care if it's liquid wrench, WD-40, um, any of the uh, above master blasters. Well, I really don't like master blaster because of the smell. but. Uh, any of, any of the penetrating oils, including the, the hardware or store brands like uh, Ace Hardware and the like, they're fine. I don't use them to lubricate. I don't recommend that you use them to lubricate. I use them for cleanup and to dissolve the old pieces. Okay, we did a pretty good job there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the worm gear now. Check it. If you see that there's dried greases and the like, Go ahead and pull it off. You can spray this with a penetrating oil if you like. And you can use a paper towel with that penetrating oil. Just rotate the, the worm gear and you can get it cleaned. 
If you're getting hung up, if you see your line guide's working but it just sticks, check these points because sometimes they get damaged and that's where it will hang. And if that's the case, get a, a micro file and put that back and uh, you should be fine. The micro file will enable you to get inside those valleys and that and uh, to go f get that fixed. Line guide goes into the slot in the bar and then hold it steady. Find the one that just has the circle point, not the one that has the, uh, the squared off larger point. Insert your line guide through and then seat that into that hole in the side plate. Now, growing up, I didn't give these reels much respect. I give them more respect now. But I just kind of thought as, uh, as I was growing up that for some reason these were inexpensive, uh, what I'll call hardware store reels. And I didn't really appreciate the design and the ability or the capability of being able to use these reels. Now I think a lot of these are treasures and uh, you really should take care of them and enjoy them and fish them. All right, we're going to put the pole back in. Now this pole has to sit flush with the metal. If it's not flush, put your finger on the pole and turn the line guide and eventually you're going to have that pole seat. As soon as it's flush, go ahead and get your screw hole down. And then reset that. And then you just want to turn it to make sure that it's riding. It's riding fine now. So what we're going to do is oil it. I oil these worm gears. I do not uh, grease them. I believe that the grease is going to trap a lot of dirt and debris. And well, that's going to cause a problem. Okay, we've done our best that we can on the spool. We want to grease the, the two posts of the spool. And in this case, the pinion gear is on the spool. So make sure that you check the teeth, just like we did on the main gear and drive. Check the teeth. And then give it a good coat of grease. I'm going to insert the spool into the carrier in the back. And then we can bring our side plate cover on. Make sure that it's firm to the back of the case. Take your main gear and assembly. Place that into the carrier. If you like, and I like, put the handle on next. That'll hold the main gear from shifting while you go ahead and do this. The, the concern with the shift is that the pin back here that's holding the gear will come out. You can give it a run now. It's, it's running nice and smoothly. And we can just set that worm gear wants to keep jumping in and out. The name on the side plate goes parallel to this. So line that up. Make sure you get the pieces on. Check all the way around to make sure that you're tight. And then find your two screws that are at the base and the top of the reel. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave them in the comment section, I will try to answer those questions for you. I did mention Orca before. You can go online. It's the Old Reels Collectors Association. You can go online to orca.org. And uh, well, if you do a search on Orca or Old Reel Collectors, you'll find them. The membership, I believe, is about $40 a year. It entitles you to all the real research, all the old issues. You get paper magazines 
uh, when published. And uh, it's got a real talk forum on there as well. But you can also find a lot of the schematics on the old reel if it happens to be something that you're working on. And it's uh, just a nice site. The money goes to a good cause of keeping these fishing reels going. And uh, yes, I am a member of it. And I've thought it's one of the best bargains around. All right, so here we go. We've What have we done so far? We've taken it off. We showed you the mechanicals. We've cleaned all of the mechanical pieces, the worm gear, the, the pawl, um, the spool, the main gear, and the drive gear in there, the side plates. We tried to bring them back as best we can. We didn't, uh, this is just an adjuster, spool adjuster here. You can take that out and put oil or grease in, but because we had the spool out and we greased the, sh the uh, shaft end of that, we've got the grease in there as a result. Let's give it a final test then. Uh, it turns nice and smooth all these years later. I mean, we're talking about over 50 years old now. It turns nice and smooth. Let's check that bait line, bait alarm. Even has a bait alarm. There you go. This reel typically would have been on a about a, maybe five and a half, six foot pole. Sometimes it might have been on an earlier fiberglass uh, version, or possibly a uh, a cane pole. So there you go. This is the South Bend Cast Orono number no. 5. It's a made in Japan reel circa 1970. And uh, that's how you take it apart, understand how the reel is made, put it back together again, and give it a second chance to go fishing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. And to everybody, I wish you great fishing, have fun, some fun times on the water, and make sure that you service your reels before you go. That way you won't be disappointed when you hook up and, uh, well, have a, have a real malperform on you. Have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.